Until now, we have been using the XC Currency Converter site, which does not require you to log in with a username and password. However, most of the applications used in enterprises require you to sign in with some sort of credentials like username and password. So you need to store the credentials somewhere. Technically, it is possible to store the credentials in the environment variables, but that is not a recommended practice as the environment variables can be accessed by all the processes and resources that are connected to the same application server. Also, the information stored in the environment variables is not encrypted. This is where Blue Prism's credential manager comes into picture. The credential manager not only encrypts the data, but also gives a great degree of control over which processes, resources, and users can access these credentials. So let's see an example. I have created a process called Gmail process, which will launch Gmail and log in using the username and password that we specify in these two data items. The login action stage will take the username and password as the inputs. Don't worry about what's there in the business object for now. As usual, I have uploaded the process and object files and shared the Google Drive link in the below description of this video. So let's go ahead and give the username and password. I have created a Gmail account with the username as BP Tutorial Test. And then I will enter the password. Now we will reset the process and click go. Okay, it successfully launched and logged into Gmail. Now let's see how to store this username and password in the credential manager and retrieve them from the process. We will click reset and I'll go to the system tab, click credentials to access the credential manager and here we will create a new credential for Gmail. I'll click new, enter the name as Gmail BP Tutorial Test, then enter the username which is BP Tutorial Test and the password. You can also set the expiry date if the password expires after a certain number of days. Similarly, you can store some additional parameters or properties that are associated with this login. For example, in some applications, it might ask you to select a domain or module when you log in. So you can store those information as well and retrieve them from the process. Next, we need to specify the access rights. There are three contexts with which you can set the access. You can provide the access based on processes, resources, and roles. In this case, we would like to use the Gmail process, so we will select that. Then under the Resources tab, we will select All Resources. You can see that Win7BB Prod1 and Win7BB Prod2 appearing twice. One as a normal runtime resource and the other one as a debug resource, which is basically the instance of Blue Prism when we open using Process Studio. The reason why you don't see the debug resource for Win7BP Test1 is because we never ran a process from Win7BP Test1 using the Process Studio. Then finally under Roles, we select any role. And I'll click OK. Now we will go to the Gmail process, click Reset, and Refresh. Now in order to access the credentials, we will use the internal business object called Credentials. So I will delete this link drag and drop an action stage, double click, I'll name it as get credentials, under business object I'll select the internal business object credentials and I'll select the action get. I'll mention the credential name exactly as we created now which is gmail-bp tutorial test. In the outputs we will save the username to the username data item and password to the password data item. I leave the expiry and status as blank and click OK. Then I will link the stages and we will clear the existing values of both the data items. Finally, we will sign out of Gmail and remove the account. All right, we are ready now and I'll click go.
Okay, so you can see that it picked up the credentials and logged in successfully. Now, if you have given any additional parameters while creating the credentials like domain name, module, etc., you can use this get property action, mention the credential name and the property name, and you will get the property value in the output. So that is how you use the credential manager to store and retrieve the credentials. As a developer, this is all you need to know, which is how to use the credential manager feature for storing and retrieving the credentials. However, it is also important to know how the credential manager works so that you can troubleshoot whenever there is an issue with storing or retrieving the credentials. So let's go to the system tab, encryption scheme, and you can see an encryption scheme called credentials key. If you remember, we created this during our multi-bot architecture setup and overview video. And if I click edit, it says the location is database. What it signifies is that the encryption key which is used to encrypt or decrypt the credentials is stored in the database. But if you select the option application server, the encryption key will be stored in the application server itself instead of storing it into the database. So that is the reason why the name you give here should be exactly the same name as what you give in the server configuration. Uh, let me show you what I mean. If we go to the C drive, program files, Blue Prism Limited, Blue Prism Automate, and double click BP server. Now click edit and go to the key store tab. You can see that we gave the same name credentials key in both the places. When you select the database as the location for credential key, the Blue Prism client is not going to look up on the application server at all. It will directly fetch from the database. So even if I delete this key from the server's key store, it is not going to make any difference or even if I rename this credential scheme name to something else, say credentials key one, it, is, it doesn't make any difference. Even if I go to the credentials and click edit, we are still able to access it. But let's say if I change the location to application server, but uh, before that, let me copy this key somewhere. I'll click show key, copy it, and I'll paste it onto a notepad. Now if I click the application server and uh, click OK, I get the warning changing the key location from database to application server will result in the key being removed from the database. Please ensure that the key has already been copied to each application server before proceeding. We have already made a note of it on the notepad so I will click proceed and now if we see it says unresolved key that is because we are asking Blue Prism client to look up for the encryption key on the application server but the names don't match in the application server the name is credentials key and the Blue Prism client it is credentials key one so now if I go to credentials and click edit I get the error failed to get credential could not decrypt data because the algorithm zero is invalid now if I go to the process and just run this get credential stage alone I get the same error that the algorithm is invalid okay so let's go back to the server configuration click edit and I'll change the scheme name to credentials key one click OK save configuration I'll close blue prism then let's restart the Blue Prism server service because whenever you change some configuration here it's better you restart the server service. And then launch Blue Prism. I log in and go to the encryption scheme. You can see that it is resolved now and it shows the method. Now if we go to the credentials and click edit, we get a completely different error. It says could not decrypt data because the padding is invalid and could not be removed. We are getting this error because when we created this credentials, the encryption key was different. I'm not talking about the name that is credential key versus credential key one. That is fine. The names don't matter as long as they match with the server configuration but the key itself has changed. 
So what I mean is if we go to the server configuration again, click edit, key store, edit again. And if we select show key, and if we compare this with the key that we originally copied on the notepad, you can see it is totally different. So we encrypted it with this key, which is on the notepad, and we are trying to decrypt it with another key. That is the reason why it is not able to decrypt the credentials. So we will copy this key and paste it here. Click OK. OK again. Save configuration. I'll close Blue Prism. And I will restart the Blue Prism server service. Now let's launch Blue Prism. Login. And now if we go to the credentials and click edit, you can see that we are able to edit. So the name of the key doesn't really matter. It's only the encryption method and the key itself that matters. Secondly, if the encryption key is on the application server, then the application server will take the responsibility of encrypting or decrypting the credentials. All right, so let's summarize what we learned. An encryption scheme is required to create, store, and retrieve a credential from the credential manager. An encryption scheme consists of three things, a name, a method, and a key. The key can be stored either in the database or in the application server. If the key is stored in the database, the computers connected to the database will directly access the key and encrypt or decrypt the credentials from the local machine. If the key is stored in the application server, then the computers will simply pass the credentials as a plain text to the application server and the application server will encrypt the credentials and store them on the database. Similarly, when a computer needs to retrieve the credentials, it will send a request to the application server, then the application server will retrieve the credentials from the database, decrypts the credentials and sends it back as a plain text to the computer. So when you select the application server for storing the encryption key, ensure that the encryption scheme name on the Blue Prism client matches with that on the application server's key store. All right, so I hope you have a clear understanding of how encryption scheme and credential manager work. Thank you for watching and we will see in the next video.